guys so welcome back um today we're doing something a little bit different we're having another adventure out the back of the landy and we are going me and luna are going on a little bit of a secret mushroom foraging expedition and it's a secret because my other daughter my three-year-old osea is at forest school today and she is the most fanatical forager in our family and mushrooms are her favorite. So this morning she got a little sniff of something going on. She saw me putting my mushroom knife into my pocket and she's like, mommy, I don't wanna go to forest school today. You go mushroom foraging. I was like, no. Um, so anyway, she got a little bit of a whiff of it and she was like, please don't go mushroom foraging, I wanna go. So anyway, we're gonna go, we're gonna try and find some today um, without her. Um, and then I'm gonna take her later on um, when she finishes and see if we can find some in our other spots. But today I'm checking out a new spot. I've never been foraging for mushrooms here before. I've walked this section of coastal path, um, but at um, different times a year. Um, we all my normal spots for this type of mushroom that I'm foraging today are coming up um, dry they haven't got anything and I think we're kind of the seasons are really like struggling at the moment and lagging a bit because of the drought that we've had all summer and um, the seasons just aren't flowing with their normal rhythm at the moment and that's obviously having a knock-on effect to the flora and fauna that we are seeing appearing um things just aren't appearing at the right time of year but that's fine we know that nature's cyclical we know that nature is patient and um we know that nature always finds a way so even if they're not here today we just need to sit tight be patient for a few more weeks and we have the promise that they kind of will appear at some point again so if we don't come up trumps today, um, we're gonna have a lovely walk anyway. We'll probably find some other things along the way as well. Um, but if we do come up trumps today, the mushroom that I am looking for is a really special one. It's absolutely delicious. And we are gonna rustle up some really delicious treats when we found it. So let's get Luna in the backpack and go out. Wakey, wakey, sleeping beauty. Luna. Wakey, wakey. All right, Loons. Excited about going mushroom foraging. You've never been on this section of the coastal path before. Wow. Beautiful day today. Check that out. Maybe we can get a little wild swim in today, Luna, hey? that water is crystal clear sadly they've shut off this beach due to cliff falls but there is a few sneaky tracks down that you can get down to it but none that I would be confident doing on my own with Luna on my back so if we are gonna go for a swim today we'll have to do it elsewhere we are in I just saw a couple um, walking and I just said, morning. I was like, you haven't seen any mushrooms, have you? And they said, yes, some massive ones. So they have pointed to me, pointed at the cliff and showed me whereabouts they are. So we're just walking there now. So that's exciting. Um, she even had a photo of them on her phone. Guys, I think we found them. Can you see those white blotches? <gasps> and over there. Yes, bingo! Here they are. One, two, three, four, five. Amazing. Awesome. Let's go and have a closer look and check that they are the right species. We're going to start the identification of this mushroom right down here, right at this base. And as you can see, it's just a load of mycelium that's kind of come together in a cluster and then forced up a mushroom um, from that. So there's no sac, it's like a bulbous base, but there's no sac. So one thing you've got to be very careful of with these mushrooms is that when they're in their smaller form, they can be confused with um, the highly poisonous Amanita family. 
So you definitely want to make sure that when you're picking them, you are picking them with the cap fully open like this because it's, it's much harder to get a wrong identification when they are fully open because in their smaller phases, they can easily be confused. But the Amanita would have a, um, a sack at the bottom rather than this mycelium mass, which is what you can see here. And then if you look further up the stipe here, um, what you will see is um, a kind of snake skin effect. Hi. A snake skin effect along the stem of the mushroom here and this is one of the telltale signs of how not to confuse this mushroom with um, the shaggy parasol mushroom which has a, um, a, a stem that doesn't have these markings on and the shaggy parasol um, can make people quite unwell so you definitely don't want to be getting those two mushrooms confused so we've got the mycelium mass base we've got the snake skin stem look at that beautiful and then we have this which is the ring and this ring i don't know if you can see it it's not attached so that's the second the third thing you want to be looking for it's not attached it's quite movable and if you don't handle it with care it will just break off the next thing is if you look right inside the cap, you will see that the gills are not joined to the stem. There is a kind of a little, a little ring around them that is free. Uh, just as the, as the stem joins the cap, there is a ring around it, a very narrow strip around it that is gill free. So the gills do not run into the stem. So they are free gills amazing and then oh, look at it, it's beautiful it smells gorgeous um you'll have these scales on the top which are slightly fluffy beautiful and then the other way to differentiate is if you cut the flesh let's cut a little slither out of it so that you can see If you cut the flesh, you'll see that this stays white. Over time, it will go a slight brown, but the uh, uh, identifying identi identification factor here is that it's not going red. So again, on a shaggy parasol, the flesh will oxidize to a red color. Smell that, Loons. Another element here, which I'm not even going to try and show you because you won't be able to see it on this camera. But if you cut out a segment, you'll notice that on the mushroom, I might be able to show you actually, you can see the mushroom flesh on this top bit and then this is the gills. So it goes, the, the mushroom flesh, the cap of the mushroom goes from thick to thin. So as it runs to the outer edge of the mushroom, the, the mushroom cap runs from thick flesh down to thin flesh and then you've got the, the gills. Beautiful. So we've got a good few mushrooms here. Ah, oh, so excited. Our first summer mushroom, Osim, Luna. Um, oh, no, Luna, it is Luna. Amazing. Right, let's go and grab them. Let's go and pick which ones we want. First, let's just have a look at them all. So they've all opened up. So what you've got to think about is mushrooms. The job of the mushroom is it's the reproducting, reproductive organ of um, the mycelium. So the mycelium, the main body, which is the mycelium, is all underground and unseen. The mushrooms that get pushed up are just the reproductive organs. So it's a little bit like picking an apple off an apple tree. The purpose of the apple is to produce seeds um, to then reproduce. Um, and the spores that are released from the mushroom's gills are the reproductive elements. So these are just the reproductive fruiting bodies of the mycelium, which is all underground and will be spanning this whole headland 
connecting into all other different tree species and um, grasses and plant species and, and communicating with each other. Um, amazing, fascinating, the mind blows the more you kind of learn about that. But let's go and have a look at the other ones. So this one has started to crack around the edges. So I'm going to leave that there because that's not a that's not a um, a great one for eating. Oh, there's some more down here. You're out right there, Loons. Again, another beautiful species here. Got some little slits around the edges again. Oh, here we go. This is a good example. So here you can see a baby one. So this one, its cap hasn't fully opened yet. So when you pick them in this stage, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so this one, the cap hasn't opened yet. And this is a really good example of how at picking at this stage can be confused with some of the more poisonous amanitas and why you'd always want to pick them when their caps are open. But also, even if you are an expert mushroom forager and you know that this isn't an amanita, you wouldn't want to pick this one because in terms of sustainability, this one hasn't done its job yet. It hasn't released its spores from its gills, so it hasn't fulfilled its job as um, a reproductive organ yet. So what we want to do is we want to let this one grow, pick it and spread its cap so that we are 100% sure on what we're picking, but also that gives it an opportunity to release its spores um, and repopulate the ground with mycelium. Oh, there's so many of them. There's two more down there. Let's have a look at these two, these two together. Beautiful. I think I'm gonna pick that one. Oh, and there's some more coming up here. There's another another one coming up here through the grass. Oh, this one's a bit deformed because the grass has, this one's a bit deformed because the grass has kind of stunted its growth, which is a shame. That also feels quite smushy, like the bugs have got to it. Are you proud of yourself, Loons? you got some mushies. I know, you want to get out, you're bored. Right, okay, let's go back and cook them up. Luna! Yeah! One last view of the beauty of Mother Nature before we head back to the truck. Oh, gorgeous. when we come away with full baskets. That was a cool trip, Loons, wasn't it? Hey, got to go foraging. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's no way she's gonna let me cook them up. <laughs> so I am gonna drive over to another spot back where we live um, and hopefully she will fall asleep en route and we are gonna try and find a nice place to cook them up. So watch this space. If you're here for the recipe, just you wait. <coughs> this is gonna blow your mind. to bread them and um, in panko and then um, you're using words of fry, panko what? breadcrumbs okay and then um, fry them and with an alioli dip and some parmesan cheese 
Wow. Very yeah. nice. Can I, can I take a picture of you? Yeah, yeah, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> what did you find there? Just on the headland, there's more. I just, I've this is all I need. So, yeah, this is all. Right, so we're on the headland. Luna's not gone to sleep, but I am keeping her quiet with some um, strawberry yogurt. Um, we're gonna cook these up, so I'm gonna show you through the different phases um, of what I do, a prep. They smell so good. Um, yeah, and we'll see how we get on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just prep them. So I'm just gonna ever so carefully remove the stem from the middle. It's a little bit fibrous. You can do a much better job than what I just did there. Hey, Luna. Remove the fibrous stem. And I am going to cut these up into like fingers. And I'm just going to do one mushroom head for now so that I can do the rest with my daughter. I see her tonight when I pick her up from forest school. But there we go, that's enough just for my lunch right now. Put a little bit of wild garlic pesto into the egg. Then I have got some seasoned flour. So this is just flour with salt and pepper and a few garlic granules. And then in here, I've just got panko breadcrumbs. So I'm just getting them one at a time. And coating them in the bread in the flour. Then this one's already done. I'm going to coat them in the egg wash, all nice and coated, and then into the panko. So that you get one lovely chunk of eggy coated panko and I'm just going to put them on one of my sea to summit plates once they're done just keep repeating the process really this is quite messy so if you are doing it outside you want to make sure that you've got something to rinse your hands down after with I've got that really cool little garden sprayer that we use all the time on the kids' feet and hands. And it comes in really handy. I actually can't see the screen right now. The sun is kind of shining. So I'm hoping that you can kind of see what I'm doing. I don't want to get to the end of this and then realize that you actually haven't seen any of it. So these are all nicely coated. I um, left a few left over because I didn't have enough egg wash, but they won't go to waste, don't worry. Save them for later. Ah, the problem with filming in the sun is that you can't see the screen and I thought I was recording and as I, and I wasn't. So you've missed me kind of dressing these, but basically it was just some alioli dip that I have thinned out with some olive oil to make it a bit more pourable. And then some microplaned um, Parmesan 
all on this. This last one is done. I just wanted one without any kind of garlic on it or anything, just to try. Gotta watch out for these seagulls. And there you go. And there we go, the finished product. Wonderfully crispy on all sides with this alioli dip and wild garlic, egg wash and parmesan. Delicious. Now to try. Mm. So delicious. Even more so because you know the process of like foraging them. It's good when you know, everything tastes better when you know what's in your food, I think. Delicious. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see on the inside, all the girls, mmm. Mm -mm -mm. So good. Insane. Really, really good.